friends, Jewel back, and I wanted to talk about Saturn opposite Saturn in Sinistry. What happens when we have two people who have Saturns opposing? So Saturn is that fourth force within us that um, wants to learn through hard work, through um, attainment, through maturity, through, um, you know, it's growth through earning it. So it's, um, you know, the hard lessons in life, things that we are restricted by, things that are boundaries to us, um, things that keep us hemmed in, and um, experiences that really cause us to mature. So Saturn is, um, you know, very much about where we are going in our, what is our long-term agenda? So, when we have Saturn's in opposition, it means we have two people that are about 14 years apart. And um, so Saturn, you know, in somebody's natal chart, is their own agenda when it comes to what they want to grow up to become, what they want to attain, and what they want to become known for successful in and so we see two people when they are opposing each other that have very different ideas about how to get what they want or what their idea of how to achieve or go about their long-term goals is or, and what those long-term goals are and their ideas about um, their personal success so essentially, they have a lot to learn from each other. Because they are in opposition, each is mirroring what the other one is missing or is needing to learn at its polarity point. So there's often a sense of having met one's other able or practical half when we have two people to get together with this opposition. You know, what one can't do well or what it doesn't feel that they do well or is unaccomplished in, the other does do well or has already learned. So there's a great amount of teaching through reflection that goes on and projection as well that goes on in this relationship. And this is actually one that used to be more uncommon, but I see this one more and more these days, especially with the female as the older partner. So it's, um, it's an interesting dynamic, and it's really interesting and really important to examine what signs the, op the opposing Saturns are in. Because the stronger Saturn, the one that's in the stronger sign or the one that is um, more prominent in somebody's chart, uh, maybe it's making a lot of aspects to uh, personal planets you know, the stronger Saturn person, and especially if you have this happening in Libra, Aries, or Cancer, Capricorn, or Virgo, Pisces, it's really going to make a difference because the weaker Saturn person, that means the lesser developed Saturn person, or the one that is less sure about their Saturn, is the one that is going to be the follower in this relationship. So the stronger Saturn is the one that typically is going to come at life as they know what's what. And they are, uh, you know, very firm about what their actions are going to be regarding um, how to get where they want to be. And the other one um, very much can have feelings of inadequacy or unaccomplishment. And that's really what sets these two people up for this particular opposition, why it's attractive in the first place. So they strongly, strongly, mutually project their unaddressed Saturn issues onto each other. Because what is not completely grown in you, or um, accomplished, or matured, whatever Saturn issues that you bring to the relationship initially, those are going to what 
going to be what's coming up between you. And that can be also in the realm of being too sure of something because Saturn also has the effect of, you know, making us fearful or insecure and on the other hand needing us needing us to be taken down a peg because we are too sure about what we think we know or what we think that we've learned. So um it's a, a, a really interesting uh, relating that we see here because when we see such projection going on in this particular um, opposition, it's really about forcing a certain amount of maturity upon each other. So the stronger Saturn can be the real know-it-all. The weaker Saturn can play the role or feel like the unappreciated doormat. Uh, there is a big wake-up call with this placement because the weaker Saturn starts to learn from and eventually, if they stay in the relationship long enough, they begin to adopt the traits of the stronger Saturn person. So when this really happens, they be, the weaker Saturn begins to overpower and, in turn, earn the respect of the other Saturn. So that is really the reason for the attraction behind this particular opposition. Because you would think it would repel because they have such different ideas and such different agendas. But if they can adopt the Saturn characteristics in each other that they have yet to grow, they have yet to claim, they have yet to work for in order to um, integrate into their own personalities, they can grow together instead of apart, which is what they really initially do because there is such a separative effect to this opposition because one thinks one way about how to get to their goals really kind of pulls the other by the hair in order to get there. The other rebels, um, begins to strengthen their own sense of accomplishment, their sense of maturity, their sense of what they can do out in the world and they begin to work together if they get that far, because oftentimes this opposition actually does end up um, with two people going their separate ways. So there is a um, great sense of responsibility towards each other when we have this one. Because there is a sense of completeness in the practicalities of a couple, meaning that what, you know, the concrete things of life, if one doesn't pay the bills well, the other one does. If they just complement each other in the way that um, makes the, uh, the everyday or the, I want to say just the, the concrete have-tos of life that kind of rounds that out within each other. And that does create a sense of security between two people and a sense of responsibility between two people because there's a recognition of, um, you know, what I can't do well, you do well, and there's this reciprocal action going on there. So it's um, one that really does require a complete redo of how you take responsibility for your own stuff and what you expect in your relationship. So, you know, you have to accept your own failings because we want to pin that on the partner in the early to mid stages of this relationship when we have this particular opposition. That's the nature of this opposition. So, you know, our own weaknesses, our own unaccomplished goals, our own fears of failure, those are all things that we have to personally address and take responsibility for before we can really see peace in this opposition because it's at that point where at least one of us has to stop projecting and really start loving and accepting those differences within the partner 
that specifically relate to Saturn. Because those are the things that we are really resisting or the things that we are denying or whatever we're personally doing. So when we start to really um, mirror those things in a way that that is healthy, where, where we are adopting those characteristics, then the other person has the opportunity to learn from that and then do the same. So it's like when one, one chooses to step out of the loop of projection, it cre can create all kinds of miracles between two people when we have this opposition. And there is a kind of a float time when they have a, a breakdown in their old ways of relating or their old ways of expecting or their old ways of um, assigning each other their gender roles. That has to be reevaluated because there is a change between two people. There's a new maturity that comes as a result of the experience of each other in this opposition. So it becomes a more um, mature relationship. It becomes a more evenly yoked relationship where they are more contemporary in the, um, the providing that goes on between the two of them. So it's uh, one that um, the age difference is really meant to teach them equality in a real kind of roundabout fashion. So it's uh, a real interesting opposition when you see between two people. And um, if you can really master this one and really um, own your own crap, this can become something that is a real strength between two people because of the way that you both bring what you're um, yet to be developed or missing. You actually really have all those things. But, you know, you develop in your own self what it is you've been missing and then the own person develops what they've been missing and then you come together and it, it creates a real success factor because there's a completeness when it comes to the abilities between the two people. We're complete in ourselves, we're complete as a couple and um, the fears and projection that was going on originally, you know, that's erased and it becomes really an appreciation, a genuine appreciation of what the other person brings to the table. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Yes, I do private consultation. You can find me on the internet at truthinaspectastrology.com. You can find me on Facebook at Truth and Aspect Astrology. And I mostly specialize in um, relationship and intimacy astrology, but I um, interpret all types of charts under the sun. And I also specialize in planetoids and asteroids as well. So I will be back super soon with more super cool videos. Don't forget to leave your comments and your suggestions for future videos because I love your suggestions. And I'll be back super soon. Bye-bye.